Hey guys, this is Tim from Tim's Electronics Lab and welcome back to a new video. Now in this video, uh, we'll be hopefully repairing this electric fireplace. Let me demonstrate to you what's wrong with it. So when you insert it into the socket and you turn it on, this is okay. Now if we turn on the heater, which definitely works, because I can feel heat coming out of here. You can set, I think this is a timer. The check. No, this is the, I think this is the power. But there are some uh, light effects as well. Which should come on and you know those fake flames should start to to wiggle and when you turn this they actually don't now let me turn off my lighting to see if the lights are working or if it's only the flames that aren't working yeah, it's hard to tell because I can see a little bit of a glow but that glow also seems to be there when the thing is off. No, I think that's the reflective glow of my lighting setup. No, no, there definitely is some glow and movement, but it's not bright. So, yeah, it's definitely happening. And there's definitely uh, things moving, but not um, with the right brightness. And yeah, let's be honest, it's cool and all that it produces heat, but yeah, you want the flames to also work, because yeah, it's, it's kind of the charms of this uh, electric fireplace. So let's actually open it up, let's see if there are any caps that we need to discharge so put it at max there you go leave it on for a while so that hopefully all the caps will be uh, discharged now there are a lot of screws and I absolutely mean a lot of screws it's basically all screws over here and at the front there I can't seem to find any screws uh, but I think we need to either go here or in this thing maybe this is some kind of control panel but I assume that we start by taking the lid off which I think should be done by removing these screws then I think we should have access to the uh, device but let's turn everything off of course the thing is unplugged you know I don't want the thing to actually turn on when we are going to plug it in later on and let's open this up. Oh, there are self tappers, but it's all metal, so there's not much to uh, actually tap. Uh, I think this is an 1800 watt uh, heater, so yeah, it's reasonably powerful, and it features uh, LED lighting effect. Which is also uh, really cool, but then again the LEDs should work. And now they're not working, So, but there are a few more screws that I need to remove. And those feel a little bit tighter. There are, they are the same size as the other screws though. So, that's... Uh, Two more to go. Yeah, 
you. Yeah, something is definitely attached to uh, that screw. So I'm guessing that we now should be able to remove this. Let me peek into here. I told you about all the screws. These are all the screws that were required to be removed in order to well, hopefully now take off this panel. But it still doesn't really want to go. I'm not sure why that is. And for that to, we need to remove the front cover. So let's turn it around. And uh, no, this won't work. Too big. Take this one. And trust the old, well, old. So, why isn't this thing just going up? Oh, I guess I didn't pull hard enough. Screws where the screws for this heating element, heating element fan combination, which goes in like this. So let's actually screw that back in. Over there at the bottom, you can see that the uh, Thing that should be simulating the flames. I guess that it's stuck. Because I can feel a little bit of a resistance when I'm rotating it. And the motor is over here. So I guess what we now need to actually do is, yeah, we actually need to power up this thing to see if it rotates. I'm not sure if this is a surface stand that it doesn't move, but it's actually quite convenient. Yeah, it is rotating. Let me try to get you to see it there you go it is rotating it's not not rotating very quickly but it certainly is rotating now I'm wondering where the actual LEDs are coming from there's your fireplace nice little bricks well fake of course but that's rather obvious but i think that that's uh, what i'm going to do in a while so that you're completely covered with information about what the project will be like so, let's take this off as well so we can have a look at the motor. Yeah, I think we can remove the bottom. So, let's lay it down like this. This is the diffuser something that really makes the flames well look more realistic. Oh, you can see the LEDs over here. In between you can see the LEDs. Let's see if I can make 
let's show to you over there no, you can't see that now for safety reasons I've tied this uh, camera mount to a um, light mount that I've above my desk there you go there are two LEDs over there and I think that they are possibly not bright enough so let's uh, plug this thing in and see what happens yeah could be brighter they're definitely working but it could be a lot brighter if we lay it down on her back again yeah well that's it plus and minus I guess it's 2013 Uh, yeah, well, let's actually turn it on so you can see the lighting. Look, it's barely lighting up. And if we take my molly meter, I'm guessing that these are 12 volt LEDs. They're wired in series, so... If we do this, we should get an overall. Yeah, I guess that this one is not working anymore. Because the first one has a voltage of 10 volts and this one has a voltage of 2 volts. And when uh, you're using the Christmas lighting that goes into your Christmas tree, uh, if one thing fails everything else will also fail I guess that if we replace this one with a temporary LED it, it might start to work again let's actually put something under here to prevent it from shorting out multimeter so this is a 12 volt interior light from a uh, car featuring the resistors needed to yeah, fool the, the system that detects if a light is faulty well the polarity doesn't matter because they're diodes See? So it's actually this LED that has gone wrong. And not that one as I expected. So it's just as simple as replacing an LED sometimes. So now obviously we need to find out what's wrong if it's just a solder joint but I don't think that it is. So we need to remove the control panel again. But I think that I'm best off by replacing both LEDs instead of a single one. Because it's most, like, most likely to fill again. And indeed, as you can see over here, this wire, that is the wire for the lighting. So, it says 6 to 10 volts, which is, well, probably enough for that thing. And we actually do need to be really careful. For charge capacitors 
And let's unplug it. There you go. And now we can remove the actual wires from the electric furnace or electric fireplace. Sorry, it's not a furnace. Okay, but to see it, I think you are. Let's insert it into the plug. And that is 13 volts. Well, not entirely the 6 to 10 volt range that the PCB shows, but yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Well, now the problem is that these LEDs are actually quite warm. And the, the car LED that I'm having over here is actually quite cold. So I guess that I'll have to order some new LEDs. So let's look up this part number and see what we can find online. So unfortunately the part number that's uh, written on the PCB is unknown. So I guess that we'll have to uh, create our own but first let's try to see if the LED actually is not working <laughs> or if it's just a soldering uh, connection fault. Now I thought that the flickering was supposed to happen because uh, that will that that gives the the fire simulation an extra well adventure and experience but as it seems it's not really supposed to happen hmm let's turn this off and let's try to supply it with my lap bench to see what happens then let's turn my lap bench on and see what the current limit is well it's around 150 milliamps which should be enough it's not even drawing any current at all so and this one is shooting straight into the current limiter so let's increase it a little bit Yeah, that one didn't, didn't take long to actually also go. Yeah, now they're both gone. And I actually do need to buy two of the boards. So let's have a quick look on the internet and I'll come back to you. Well, let's actually see what the effect will be of this screen on this bright, um, very cold LED. Now, just disconnect it. I think that this also will work quite well. 83 milliamps. That equals to 1 watt. So these are just regular off the shelf LED modules that you can buy uh, but they're in series so these are 6 volt 1 watt LED modules so let's actually do a load test because I've got a resistor over here this will pull the maximum current that this thing can do that is about yeah one about 100 milliamps so a watt of current a watt of electricity and a watt of power so that's quite low and it also limits the amount of options that I've got I just remembered that I had a LED strip laying around it's not the warmest light but it does uh, provide a nice bright strip of light 
which I think is also something worth. So let me turn off my studio lighting so you are able to see I thought there was smoke coming out of the thing for a second but that's that rotating device that creates those fake flames you know it's not as focused as a single LED or two LEDs those are just a bit like this but then again they are not entirely warm so it does work but it's not perfect so I decided that I would just use the LED strip uh, instead of buying the other uh, LEDs since that would take quite some time before they get here and since they are quite specific I don't actually uh, yeah you can't really find them in any local store so Let's actually move to the bench real quick. And in order to do that, we need to make room so we can mount it to the bottom plate. So I uh, see you at the desk. So I'm at the desk waiting for my soldering iron to heat up so we can desolder these wires because I'll need the wires and yeah well in order to mount a LED strip there are two posts right here you can't just put a LED strip on that so I've got an idea I've got a little piece of aluminum laying around over here and I think that that would make well, quite a uh, good stand or mounting place for the, uh, for the LED strip it does not cover the entire width of the electric furnace, but it does cover, well, I'd say 90% of it. So let's actually wait for the soldering iron to heat up, and then we're going to desolder it. So as always, turn on my uh, solar fume sucker. So I'm going to reuse an old strip that I got laying around. Um, so it might look a little bit roughed up here and there, but let's put it on the aluminum. Let's stick it on here. Hoping that we will get uh, quite a uh, good seal, of course. I'm a little bit worried that the LEDs are going to be too dim, but we'll see. It does actually look like it's sticking properly, and I didn't get the flux. So let's prepare the soldering iron. And let's remove the wires. Well, that went really smooth. Like so. And we can turn this down. Like so. And now we can obviously solder the wire to the LED strip. So I'll be keeping these so that I can uh, still use the boards when I want to switch back to the old LEDs but for now I'm going to remove them since they are obviously in the way I did found the listing on Aliexpress for these LEDs it's only 40 cents per 10 pieces so it's only the LED not the uh, circuit board uh, oh wow that's really nice they did put some thermal paste on there so well let's actually 
also do that. I'm wondering how I'm going to actually mount these. I think I'll just use some uh, tie wraps to uh, mount them. Let's solder the wires to the pads. So let's do the negative one first. First let's put flux on there. A little bit of flux. Now I think I'll be adding some heat shrink around the, uh, the end. So that there's a uh, good seal. And that any strain, uh, strain relief is being put on the heat shrink and not on the little tiny solar pad that's on the uh, these LED strips. It doesn't make sense to cover the whole thing because we'll only make a contact like so. It should stay in place enough so that we can just use it. Save these. So let's go back to the floor so we can assemble this again. Yeah, let's actually test this before we assemble everything together. And let's put it back in its position. I do actually want to insert a single screw so that the button doesn't crash out on me. Like so, let's uh, insert it and see what it looks like. I'm very curious. Wow, that looks awesome. Let's remove the this one and this one. Oop. And let's push it back in there. Wow, this looks cool, man. They are not as concentrated as they were before, but now the whole thing is glowing. And if we put this even darker piece over this one, yeah, this is, I think it's supposed to go like this. This is really cool. You can really see the glow and of course the nice fires. I'd say that this is uh, quite definitely a win. And now we can uh, assemble everything back together and see uh, what the end result may, uh, will be. There you go. There is the electric fireplace again. Now let's turn this bad boy back on. Of course, let's first turn it off, because I don't want you to see the end result yet. Whilst we insert this plug and let's also turn off the studio lights and let's turn it on. Wow, it's really hot. And I didn't even know you could adjust the brightness of the thing. But it only dims up until this point. But wow. It's back working again. With this nice little furnace working. I'm going to thank you for watching. And I'm going to also wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy 2021. Let's hope that that year will be a little bit better than this year. But I'm uh, most certain it would. So. So again, Merry Christmas and I hope to see you a lot of times in my upcoming videos. Take care and I see you. Bye bye.
Hey guys, this is Tim. I hope you liked that video. If you want to see more, please make sure to subscribe. Uh, you can also share the video with your friends and hit that like button. I'll see you in the next one.